the Kaaba Makkah, saying, Our Lord, accept the service from us. Verily, you are the hearer, the knower. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O Muhammad, remind your people when Ibrahim and Ismail built the house and raised its foundations while saying, Our Lord, accept the service from us. Verily, you are the hearer, the knower. Al Qurtubi mentioned that Abay and Ibn Masud used to recite the ayah this way. And, remember, when Ibrahim and his son, Ismail were raising the foundations of the house. 371, the Kaaba at Makkah, saying, Our Lord, accept the service from us. Verily, you are the hearer, the knower. What further testifies to the statement, which adds, saying to the ayah, by Bay and Ibn Masud, is what came afterwards, Our Lord. And make us submissive unto you and of our offspring a nation submissive unto you. The prophets Ibrahim and Ismail were performing a good deed, yet they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this good deed from them. Ibn Abi Hadam narrated that. Wahab bin al Ward recited. And, remember, when, Ibrahim and his son, Ismail were raising the foundations of the house, the Kaaba at Makkah, saying, Our Lord, accept this service from us and cried and said, O oh, Khalil of Ar-Rahman, you raise the foundations of the house of Ar-Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yet you are afraid that he will not accept it from you. This is the behavior of the sincere believers, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in a statement. And those who give that which they give, 2360. Meaning, they give away voluntary charity, and, perform the acts of worship yet, with, their hearts full of fear, 23, 60, afraid that these, good deeds might not be accepted of them. There is an authentic hadith narrated by Aisha, on this subject, which we will mention later, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, willing. Al-Bakari reported that Ibn Abbas said, 372 Prophet Ibrahim took Ismail and his mother and, went away with them until he reached the area of, the house, where he left them next to a tree, above Zamzam in the upper area of the masjid. During that time, Ismail's mother was still nursing, him. Makkah was then uninhabited, and there, was no water source in it. Ibrahim left them there, with a bag containing some dates and a water, skin containing water. Ibrahim then started to leave, and Ismail's mother followed him and said, O oh Ibrahim, to whom are you leaving us in this barren valley that, is not inhabited? She repeated the question, several times and Ibrahim did not reply. She asked, has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to do, this? He said, yes. She said, I am satisfied that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never, abandon us. Ibrahim left, and when he was far enough away, where they could not see him, close to, Thania, he faced the house, raised his hands, and supplicated. O oh our Lord! I have made some, of my offspring to dwell in an uncultivable valley, by your sacred house, the Kaaba at Makkah, until, give thanks, 1437. Ismail's mother then returned to her place, started drinking water from the water skin and, nursing Ismail. When the water was used up, she, and her son became thirsty. She looked at him, and he was suffering from thirst. She left, because she disliked seeing his face in that, condition. She found the nearest mountain to, where she was, as Safa, ascended it and looked, in vain, hoping to see somebody. When she came, down to the valley, she raised her garment and, ran, just as a tired person runs, until she reached, 373 the Almarwa mountain. In vain, she looked to, see if there was someone there. She ran to end, fro, between the two mountains, seven times. Ibn Abbas said that the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, This is why the people make the trip, between, as Safa and Almarwa, during, Hajj and Umrah. When she reached, Al Marwa, she heard a voice and said, shush, to herself. She tried to, hear the voice again and when she did, she said, I have heard you. Do you have relief? She found the angel digging with his heel, or his, wing, where Zamzam now exists, and the water, gushed out. Ismail's mother was astonished and started, digging, using her hand to transfer water to the, water skin. Ibn Abbas said that the Prophet then said, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant his mercy to the mother, of Ismail, had she left the water, flow, naturally without her intervention, it, would have been flowing on the surface of, the earth. Ismail's mother started drinking the water and, her milk increased for her child. The angel, Gabriel, said to her, Do not fear, abandon it. There shall be a house for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, built here by this boy and his father. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does, not abandon his people. During that time, the area of the house was, raised above ground level and the floods used to, reach its right and left sides. Afterwards some people of the tribe of Jerem, passing through Kata, made camp at the bottom. 374 of the valley. They saw some birds, they were, astonished, and said, birds can only be found at, a place where there is water. We did not notice, before that this valley had water. They sent a scout or two who searched the area, found the water, and returned to inform them, about it. Then they all went to Ismail's mother, next to the water, and said, O mother of Ismail, will you allow us to be with you, or dwell with, you? She said, yes. But you will have no exclusive, right to the water here. They said, we agree. Ibn Abbas said that the Prophet said, at that time, Ismail's mother liked to, have human company and thus they stayed there and sent for their relatives to join them. Later on, her boy reached the age of puberty and married a lady from them, for Ismail learned Arabic from them, and they, like the way he was raised, Ismail's mother died, after that. Then an idea occurred to Abraham to visit his dependents. So he left, to Makkah. When he, arrived, he did not find Ismail, so he asked his, wife about him. She said, he has gone out, hunting. 
When he asked her about their living conditions, she complained to him that they live in misery and poverty. Abraham said to her, When your husband comes, convey my greeting and tell him to change the threshold of his gate. When Ismail came, he sensed that they had a visitor and asked his wife, Did we have a visitor? 375 She said, Yes. An old man came to visit us and asked me about you, and I told him where you were. He also asked about our condition, and I told him that we live in hardship and poverty. Ismail said, Did he ask you to do anything? She said, Yes. He asked me to convey his greeting and that you should change the threshold of your gate. Ismail said to her, He was my father and you are the threshold, so go to your family, that is you are divorced. So he divorced her and married another woman. Again Ibrahim thought of visiting his dependents, whom he had left, at Makkah. Ibrahim came to Ismail's house, but did not find Ismail and asked his wife, Where is Ismail? Ismail's wife replied, He has gone out hunting. He asked her about their condition, and she said, That they have a good life and praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim asked, What is your food and what is your drink? She replied, Our food is meat and our drink is water. He said, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bless their meat and their drink. The Prophet, Muhammad, said, They did not have crops then, otherwise, Ibrahim would have invoked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless that too. Those who do not live in Makkah cannot bear eating a diet only containing meat and water. Ibrahim said, When Ismail comes back, convey my greeting to him and ask him to keep the threshold of his gate. When Ismail came back, he asked, Has anyone visited us? 376 She said, Yes. A good-looking old man, and she praised Ibrahim, and he asked me about our livelihood and I told him that we live in good conditions. He asked, Did he ask you to convey any message? She said, Yes. He conveyed his greeting to you, and said that you should keep the threshold of your gate. Ismail said, That was my father, and you are the threshold. He commanded me to keep you. Ibrahim then came back visiting and found Ismail, behind the Zamzam well, next to a tree, mending his arrows. When he saw Ibrahim, he stood up and they greeted each other, just as the father and son greet each other. Ibrahim said, O Ismail, your Lord has ordered me to do something. He said, Obey your Lord. He asked Ismail, Will you help me? He said, Yes, I will help you. Ibrahim said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded me to build a house for him there, and he pointed to an area that was above ground level. So, both of them rose and started to raise the foundations of the house. Abraham started building the Kaaba, while Ismail continued handing him the stones. Both of them were saying, O our Lord, accept the service from us, verily, you are the hearing, the knowing. 2.127. Hence, they were building the house, part by part, going around it and saying, Our Lord, accept the service from us. Verily, you are the hearer, the knower. 377 The story of rebuilding the house by Quraj before the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was sent as prophet. In the Sirah, Muhammad bin Ishaq bin Yasser said, When the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reached 35 years of age, the Quraj gathered to rebuild the Kaaba, this included covering it with a roof. However, they were weary of demolishing it. During that time, the Kaaba was barely above a man's shoulder, so they wanted to raise its height and build a ceiling on top. Some people had stolen the Kaaba's treasure beforehand, which used to be in a well in the middle of the Kaaba. The treasure was later found with a man, called Duwak, a freed servant of Bani Mulay bin Amr, from the tribe of Kusa'a. The Quraj cut off his hand as punishment. Some people claimed that those who actually stole the treasure left it with Duwak. Afterwards, the sea brought a ship that belonged to a Roman merchant to the shores of Jeddah, where it washed up. So they collected the ship's wood to use it for the Kaaba's ceiling. A Coptic carpenter in Makkah prepared what they needed for the job. When they decided to begin the demolition process to rebuild a house, Abu Wahb bin Amr bin Arid bin Abd bin Imran bin Makrizim took a stone from the Kaaba. The stone slipped from his hand and went back to where it had been. He said, O people of Quraysh, do not spend on rebuilding the house, except from what was earned from pure sources. No money earned from a prostitute, usury, or injustice should be included. Ibn Ishaq commented here that the people also attribute these words to Awali bin Al-Mura bin Abdullah bin Amr bin Makrizim. Ibn Ishaq continued, the Quraysh began to organize their efforts to rebuild the Kaaba, each sub-tribe taking the responsibility of rebuilding a designated part of it. 378 However, they were still weary about bringing down the Kaaba. Al Walid bin al muir said, I will start to bring it down. He held an axe and stood by the Kaaba, and said, O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no harm is meant. O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we only seek to do a good service. He then started to chop a house of stones. The people waited that night and said, we will wait and see. If something strikes him, we will not bring it down, and instead rebuild it the way it was. If nothing happens to him, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have agreed to what we are doing. The next morning, al Walid went to work on the Kaaba, and the people started bringing the Kaaba down with him. When they reached the foundations that Ibrahim built, they uncovered green stones that were above each other, just like a pile of spears. Ibn Ishaq then said that some people told him. A man from Quraysh, who was helping rebuild the Kaaba, placed a shovel between two of these stones to pull them up. When one of the stones was moved, all of Makkah shook, so they did not dig up these stones. The dispute regarding who should place the black stone in its place. 
Ibn Ishaq said. The tribes of Quraysh collected stones to rebuild a house, each tribe collecting on their own. They started rebuilding it until the rebuilding of the Kaaba reached the point where the black stone was to be placed in its designated site. A dispute erupted between the various tribes of Quraysh, each seeking the honor of placing the black stone for their own tribe. The dispute almost led to violence between the leaders of Quraysh in the area of the sacred house. Banu Abd Ad Darn Banu Adi Ben Ka Ben Liu gave their mutual pledge to fight until death. However, five or 379 four days later, Abu Mai bin al Mura bin Abdullah bin Amr bin Makrasim, the oldest man from Quraysh then intervened at the right moment. Abu Umayyah suggested that Quraysh should appoint the first man to enter the house from its entrance to be a mediator between them. They agreed. The messenger, Muhammad, was the first person to enter the house. When the various leaders of Quraysh realized who the first one was, they all proclaimed, This is all Amin, the honest one. We all accept him. This is Muhammad. When the Prophet reached the area where the leaders were gathering and they informed him about their dispute, he asked them to bring a garment and place it on the ground. He placed the black stone on it. He then requested that each of the leaders of Quraysh hold a garment from one side and all participate in lifting the black stone, moving it to its designated area. Next, the Prophet carried the black stone by himself and placed it in its designated position and built around it. The Quraysh used to call the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all of and before the revelation came to him. Ibn Azabir rebuilds all Kaaba the way the Prophet wished. Ibn Ishaq said, During the time of the Prophet, the Kaaba was 18 cubits high and was covered with Egyptian linen and they with a striped garment. Al Hajjai ben Yusuf was the first person to cover it with silk. The Kaaba remained the same way the Quraysh rebuilt it until it was burned during the reign of Abdullah bin Izabir after the year 60 H at the end of the reign of Yazid bin Muawiyah. During that time, Ibn Izabir was besieged at Makkah. When it was burned, Ibn Izabir brought the Kaaba down and built it upon the foundations of 380 Ibrahim, including the HIJ in it. He also made an eastern door and a western door in the Kaaba and placed them on ground level. He had heard his aunt, Aisha, the mother of the believers, narrate that the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had wished that the Kaaba remained like this throughout his reign until all Hajjai killed Ibn Azabar and then rebuilt it the way it was before, by the order of Abdul Malik bin Marwan. Muslim recorded that Ada said, The house was burnt during the reign of Yazid bin Muawiyah when the people of Hashem raided Makkah. Ibn Azabar did not touch the house until the people came for Hajj, for he wanted to incite them against the people of Hashem. He said to them, O people, Advise me regarding the Kaaba, should we bring it down and rebuild it, or just repair the damage it sustained? Ibn Abbas said, I have an opinion about this. You should rebuild the house the way it was when the people became Muslims. You should leave the stones that existed when the people became Muslims and when the Prophet was sent. Ibn Azabir said, if the house of one of them gets burned, he will not be satisfied until he rebuilds it. How about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's house I will invoke my Lord for three days and will then implement what I decide. When the three days had passed, he decided to bring the Kaaba down. The people hesitated to bring it down, fearing that the first person to climb on the house would be struck down. A man went on top of the house and threw some stones down, and when the people saw that, no harm touched him, they started doing the same. They brought the house down to ground level. Ibn Azabir surrounded the site with curtains hanging from pillars, so that the house would be covered, until the building was erect. 381 Ibn Azabir then said, I heard Aisha say that the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if it was not for the fact that the people have recently abandoned disbelief, and that I do not have enough money to spend on it, I would have included in the house five cubits from all HIJR and would have made a door for it that people could enter from, and another door that they could exit from. Ibn Azabir said, I can spend on this job, and I do not fear the people. So he added five cubits from the HIJR, which looked like a rear part for the house that people could clearly see. He then built the house and made it 18 cubits high. He thought that the house was still short and added ten cubits in the front and built two doors in it, one as an entrance and another as an exit. When Ibn Azabir was killed, al Hajjai wrote to Abdul Malik bin Marwan asking him about the house and told him that Ibn Azabir made a rear section for the house. Abdul Malik wrote back, We do not agree with Ibn Azabir's actions. As for the Kaaba's height, leave it as it is. As for what he added from the HIJR, bring it down and build the house as it was before and close the door. Therefore, al Hajjai brought down the house and rebuilt it as it was. In a Sunan, and Nasari collected the hadith of the Prophet narrated from Asia, not the whole story. The correct Sunnah conformed to Ibn Azabar's actions, because this was what the Prophet wished he 382 could do, but feared that the hearts of the people who recently became Muslim could not bear rebuilding the house. This Sunnah was not clear to Abdul Malik bin Marwan. Hence, when Abdul Malik realized that Asia had narrated the hadith of the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this subject, he said, I wish we had left it as Ibn Azabar had made it. Muslim recorded that Ubadi Dullah bin Abayd said that al Harith bin Abdullah came to Abdul Malik bin Marwan during his reign. Abdul Malik said, I did not think that Abu Qubayb, Ibn Azabir, heard from Aisha what he said he heard from her. al Harith said, Yes he did. I heard the Hadiths from her. Abdul Malik said, You heard her say what? He said, She said that the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
Your people rebuilt the house smaller. Had it not been for the fact that your people are not far from the time of Shirk, I would add what was left outside of it. If your people afterwards think about rebuilding it, let me show you what they left out of it. He showed her around seven cubits. One of the narrators of the Hadith, al Walid bin Ada, added that the Prophet said, I would have made two doors for the house on ground level, one eastern and one western. Do you know why your people raised its door above ground level? 383 she said, no. He said, to allow only those whom they wanted to enter it. When a man whom they did not wish to enter the house climbed to the level of the door, they would push him down. Abdul Malik then said, you heard Aisha say this, Hadith? He said, yes. Abdul Malik said, I wish I left it as it was. An Ethiopian will destroy the Kaaba just before the last hour. The two saw he's recorded that Abu Herrera said that the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the Kaaba will be destroyed by dust sandwichitin, literally, a person with two lean legs, from Ethiopia. Also, Ibn Abbas said that the Prophet said, as if I see him now, a black person with thin legs, plucking the stones of the Kaaba one after another. All Bukhari recorded this, Hadiz. Imam Ahmad ben Hanbal recorded in his, Musnad bin Abdullah, bin Amr bin Allah said that he heard the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, say, 384, does Sawakatan from Ethiopia will destroy the Kaaba and will loot its adornments and cover? It is as if, I see him now, bald, with thin legs striking the Kaaba, with his axe. This will occur after the appearance of Gog and Magog, people. Al Bukhari reported that Abu Sayyid al Qadri said that the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, There will be Hajj and Umrah to the house after the appearance of Gog and Magog people. Al Khalil's supplication. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that Ibrahim and Ismail supplicated to him, Our Lord, and make us submissive unto you and of our offspring a nation submissive unto you, and show us our manasik, and accept our repentance. Truly, you are the one who accepts repentance, the most merciful. Ibn Ajrir said, they meant by their supplication, make us, submit to your command and obedience and not, associate anyone with you in obedience or, worship. Also, Ikrimah commented on the ayah, Our Lord, and make us submissive unto you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I shall do that. And of our offspring a nation, submissive unto you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I shall do that. 385 This supplication by Ibrahim and Ismail is similar to what, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us of about his believing servants. And those who say, Our Lord. Bestow on us, from our wives and our offspring the comfort of our eyes, and make us leaders of the Madukin. 2574. This type of supplication is allowed, because loving to have offspring who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without partners, is a sign of complete love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why when, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Ibrahim, Verily, I am, going to make you an imam, a leader, for mankind, to, follow you, 2124. Ibrahim said, And of my, offspring, to make leaders. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, said, My covenant, prophethood, includes not the Zalaman, polytheists and, wrongdoers, 2124, which is explained by, And keep me and my sons away from, worshipping idols, 1435. Muslim narrated in his, Sahih that Abu Herrera said, that the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 386. When the son of Adam dies, his deeds end except, for three deeds. An ongoing charity. A knowledge that is being benefited from, and. A righteous son who supplicates, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for him. The meaning of Manasik. Sayyid bin Mansur said that Abu Bashir informed us from Kasif, from Mujahid who said, The Prophet Ibrahim supplicated, and show us our Manasik. Jibril then came down, took him to the house and said, Raise its foundations. Ibrahim raised the house's foundations and completed the building. Jibril held Ibrahim's hand, led him to as Safa and said, This is among the rituals of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He then took him to Al Marwa and said, And this is among the rituals of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He then took him to Mina until when they reached the Akaba, they found Iblis standing next to a tree. Jibril said, Say Takbir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the great, and throw pebbles at him. Ibrahim said the Takbir and threw pebbles at Iblis. Iblis moved to the middle genre, and when Jibril and Ibrahim passed by him, Jibril said to Ibrahim, Say, Takbir and throw at him. Ibrahim threw at him and said Takbir. The devious Iblis sought to add some evil acts to the rituals of Hajj, but he was unable to succeed. Jibril took Ibrahim's hand and led him to Al Mash'ar, Al Haram, and Arafat and said to him, Have you, Arafta, known, learned, what I showed you thrice? Ibrahim said, Yes I did. Similar statements were reported from Abimilaz and Qatada. 387. 2129 Our Lord. Send amongst them a messenger, of their own, who shall recite unto them your, verses and instruct them in the book, this Quran, and purify them. Verily, you are the mighty, the, wise. Ibrahim's supplication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends the Prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Ibrahim's supplication. Our Lord. Send amongst them a messenger of their, own, who shall recite unto them your verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Ibrahim's supplication for the benefit of the people of the sacred area, to grant them security and provision, and it was perfected by invoking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send a messenger from his offspring. This accepted supplication from Ibrahim conformed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's appointed destiny that Muhammad be set as a messenger among the Amun and to all non-Arabs, among the jinns and mankind. Hence, Ibrahim was the first person to mention the Prophet to the people.
Ever since, Muhammad was, known to the people, until the last prophet was sent, among the children of Israel, Jesus the son of Mary, who, mentioned Muhammad by name. Jesus addressed the, children of Israel saying, 388 I am the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unto you, confirming what is, before me in the Torah, and giving glad tidings of a, messenger to come after me, whose name shall be, Ahmad. 61 6. This is why the prophet said, the supplication of my father Ibrahim and the glad, tidings brought forth by Jesus the son of Mary. The prophet said, my mother saw a light that went out of her and radiated, the palaces of Asham. It was said that, the prophet's mother saw this vision when she, was pregnant with, narrated this vision to her, people, and the story became popular among, them. The light mentioned in the Hadiths appeared in Asham, Greater Syria, testifying to what will later occur when the Prophet's religion will be firmly established in Asham area. This is why, by the end of time, Asham will be a refuge for Islam and its people. Also, Jesus the son of Mary will descend in Asham, next to the eastern white minaret in Damascus. The two saw he stated, There will always be a group of my Ummah who will be on the truth, undeterred by those who fail or oppose them until the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes while they are on this. Al Bakari added in his Sahih and they will reside at Ash Sham. 389 The meaning of al Kitab wal Hikmah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And instruct them in the book. Meaning, al Quran. And al Hikmah. Meaning, the Sunnah. 390. As al Hasan, Qatada, Muqatil bin Hayyan and Abu Malik asserted, it was also said that al Hikmah means comprehension in the religion. And both meanings are correct. And purify them. Ali bin Abi Talib said, that Ibn Abbas said that the ayah means, with the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verily, you are the mighty, the wise. This, I have stated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do anything, and nothing escapes his ability. He is wise in his decisions, his actions, and he puts everything in its rightful place due to his perfect knowledge, wisdom, and justice. 2 130 And who turns away from the religion of Ibrahim, that is Islamic monotheism, except him who fools himself? Truly, we chose him in this world, and verily, in the hereafter he will be among the righteous. 2 131 When his Lord said to him, Submit, that is be a Muslim. He said, I have submitted myself, as a, Muslim, to the Lord of the Alayman, mankind, jinn, and all that exists. 2.132 And this, submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Islam, was, enjoined by Ibrahim, Abraham, upon his sons and, by Jacob, Jacob, saying, O my sons, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, chosen for you the, true, religion, then die not, except as Muslims. Only the fools deviate from Ibrahim's religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and who turns away from the religion of Ibrahim, that is, Islamic monotheism, except him who fools himself. Truly, we chose him in this world and verily, in the hereafter he will be among the righteous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuted the disbelievers' innovations of associating others with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in defiance of the religion of Ibrahim, 391 the leader of the upright. Ibrahim always singled out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship, with sincerity, and he did not call upon others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not commit shirk, even for an instant. He disowned every other deity that was being worshipped instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and defied all his people in this regard. Prophet Ibrahim said, O my people, I am indeed free from all that you join as partners in worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verily, I have turned my face towards him who has created the heavens and the earth, Hanifa, Islamic monotheism, and I am not of all, Mushrikan. 678-79 Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And, remember, when Ibrahim said to his father and his people, Verily, I am innocent of what you worship except him, that is. I worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, who, did create me. And verily, he will guide, me. 43 26-27 392 And Ibrahim's invoking, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for his, father's forgiveness was only because of a, promise he, Ibrahim, had made to him, his father. But when it became clear to, him, Ibrahim, that he, his father, was an enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he dissociated himself, from him. Verily, Ibrahim was Allah, one who invokes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with humility, glorifies him and remembers him much, and was forbearing. 9114. And, verily, Ibrahim was an Ummah, a leader, having all the good qualities, or a nation, obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Hanif, that is to worship, none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he was not one of, those who were all mushrikan. He was, thankful for his, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's, favors. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, chose him, as an intimate friend, and, guided him to a straight path. And we gave him good in this world, and in the hereafter he shall be of the righteous. 16 120 to 122. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said here, and who turns away from the religion of Ibrahim, meaning, abandons his path, way and method, except him who fools himself, meaning, who commits injustice against himself by deviating from the truth to wickedness. Such a person will be defying the path of he who was chosen in this life to be a true imam from the time he was young until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him to be his kalil and who shall be among the successful in the last life. Is there anything more insane than deviating from this path and following? 393 The path of misguidance and deviation instead. Is there more injustice than this? 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. 394. Verily, joining others in worship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is a great, zom, wrong, indeed. 3113. Abu al-Aliyah and Qatada said. This ayah, 2130, was revealed about the Jews, who invented a practice that did not come from, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that defied the religion of Ibrahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala statement. Ibrahim was neither a Jew nor a Christian, but he, was a true Muslim Hanifa, to worship none but, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and he was not of, all mushrikan. Verily, among mankind who have the best claim, to Ibrahim are those who followed him, and this, Prophet, Muhammad, and those who have, believed, Muslims. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Wali, protector and helper, of the believers. 367, 68. Testifies to this fact. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said next. When his Lord said to him, Submit, that is be a Muslim. He said, I have submitted myself, as a Muslim, to the, Lord of the, Alayman, mankind, jinn and all that exists. This ayah indicates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded, Ibrahim to be sincere with him and to abide and, submit to him. Ibrahim perfectly adhered to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. And this, submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Islam, was enjoined by, Ibrahim upon his sons and by Yaqob. Means, Ibrahim commanded his offspring to, follow this religion, that is, Islam, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or, the, I might be referring to Ibrahim's, words, I have submitted myself, as a Muslim, to the Lord of the, Alayman, mankind, jinn and all that exists. This means that these prophets loved these words so, much that they preserved them until the time of death, and advised their children to adhere to them after them. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And he, Ibrahim, made it, that is, La ilaha illallah, none has the right to be worshipped but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alone a word lasting among his offspring, true, monotheism. 43.28 it might be that Ibrahim advised his children, including, Jacob, Isaac's son, who were present. It appears, and, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, that Isaac was endowed with Jacob, during the lifetime of Ibrahim and Sarah, for the good, news includes both of them in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's statement. But we gave her, Sarah, glad tidings of Ishak, Isaac, and after Ishak, of Jacob, Jacob. 1171. 395 also, if Jacob was not alive then, there would be no use, here in mentioning him specifically among Isaac's, children. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah al ankabat and we bestowed on him, Ibrahim, Ishak and, Jacob, and we ordained among his offspring, prophethood in the book. 2927. And. And we bestowed upon him Ishak, and, a, grandson, Jacob. 2172. Thus, indicating that this occurred during Ibrahim's, lifetime. Also, Jacob built, Beit al maqdis as earlier books, testified. The two Sahis recorded that Abu Dar said. I said, O Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which masjid was, built first? He said, Al Masjid Al Haram, Al Kaaba. I said, then, he said, Bait al maqdis I said, how many years later? He said, 40 years. Further, the advice that Jacob gave to his children, which, we will soon mention, testifies that Jacob was among, those who received the advice mentioned in, I am above, 230 to 132. 396 adhering to Talit until death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. 397. Saying, O oh my sons. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen for you the, true, religion, then die not except as Muslims. Meaning, perform righteous deeds during your lifetime and remain on this path, so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will endow you with the favor of dying upon it. Usually, one dies upon the path that he lived on and is resurrected according to what he died on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most generous, helps those who seek to do good deeds to remain on the righteous path. This by no means contradicts the authentic hadith that says, Man might perform the works of the people of paradise until only a span of outstretched arms or a cubit separates him from it. Then the book, Destiny, takes precedence, and he performs the works of the people of the fire and thus enters it. Also, man might perform the works of the people of the fire until only a span of outstretched arms or a cubit separates him from the fire, but the book takes precedence and he performs the works of the people of paradise and thus enters it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. 398. As for him who gives, in charity, and keeps his duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fears him, and believes in all, husna. We will make smooth for him the path of, ease, goodness. But he who is a greedy miser and thinks himself, self-sufficient. And belies, all husna, none has, the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will, make smooth for him the path for evil. 92 5 to 10. 2 133 are were you witnesses when death, approached Jacob, Jacob, when he said unto his, sons, what will you worship after me? They said, we shall worship your Isla, God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Isla of your fathers, Ibrahim, Abraham, Ismail, Ishmael, Ishak, Isaac, one Isla, and to whom we, submit, in Islam. 2134 That was a nation who has passed away. They shall receive the reward of what they earn, and you of what you earn. And you will not be, asked of what they used to do. Jacob's will then testament to his children upon this death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells. Or were you witnesses when death approached Jacob, Jacob, when he said unto his sons, what will you, worship after me? This ayah contains Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's criticism of the Arab pagans, among the offspring of Ismail as well as the disbelievers, among the children of Israel Jacob the son of Isaac, the son of Ibrahim. 
when death came to Jacob, he advised his children to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without partners. He said to them, What will you worship after?